Hey everyone, I can see your messages. I don't know if, can you just let me know if you can hear me? I hopefully you can. <laughs> it starts at four, Kathleen. I'm looking at your messages. I just, I'm just sort of making sure everything works. Can you hear me all? Let me know if you're there. Hopefully you can hear me. Yay, good. <laughs> right, so I won't be saying anything much yet. I'm going to wait till for a few more minutes because obviously I'm supposed to be live a little bit later in five minutes or so. But <laughs> I don't, I have never done this, so be nice to me. I wasn't sure if it would work. It has. <laughs> Fantastic. So, um, yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi. Nice to meet you, Aurora, Nazreen, and who else can I see? Catherine. Look, I should have glasses on, but I think you're going to get a ton of reflection. So I'm going to take them off and then um, maybe it'll maybe we'll be able to read. Who's got questions for me before I officially start this off at five? Where are you? Type in where you are. Which countries are you in? I'm in the UK, not China, although there's a Chinese flag. Where are you all? I'm in the UK. I live not far from Oxford, Bright, um, Bristol, that part of the UK. Where are you all from? I'm waiting to see. <laughs> South Africa, hi. I love South Africa. I was there two years ago. Love it. Okay, South Africa, UK, Spain, Seville. Ah, warmer than here. Ben, you're in the UK. Where are you, Ben? Is it sunny? It's beautiful here. Okay, cool. Excellent. Manchester, where? I was at university there. Gloucestershire, Alex, you're my neighbour. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, really nice. Ah, uh, hi, USA. Happy Thanksgiving. Port Elizabeth, drove through there. Lovely. Great. So a really nice bunch of people. St. Helens. Ah, okay. Fabulous. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you all. Right, I'm sorry. I have to wait till four. Four in, I can't remember the time zones. Here it's two. Beijing, it's something like 10 p.m. I know that um, we're in different time zones. So I am just gonna, just gonna hang on for a little bit. I'm trying to see the time, five minutes. Who's got a question for me before I start? See if I can answer any of your questions first. Random questions. Who's got a question? How many of you maybe teach already online? Write it down. This is very strange, talking to myself and knowing you're there and you can see me, but I can't see you. <laughs> it's very strange. I don't know if I can make this bigger. No, I can't. All right, so let me tell you, what can I tell you about myself that I won't repeat very shortly? I'm about to put up my Christmas classroom. Can you see this? This is my tinsel that will soon be behind me and I have got, I'm going to change my background. Do you have a school teacher? What do you mean, Kathleen? Do I have a school teacher? Sorry, I'm not sure. What TEFL course? I did the 280 or 260 with I2I. It was brilliant. Um, yeah, now, Naz, Naz, they are for some, they are for some companies. The one I work for, no, but I will, there are companies that recruit South Africans, definitely. It's a bit of a bugbear, I have to say, it's quite difficult, um, because there are some, as I say, there are co companies who do, and there are companies who don't, um, which is a real shame. Um, but I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, now, Elise, those sort of questions about the TEFL course itself, I think I to I are going to be in here and they can tell you about courses like that. Personally, mine, I took about four, five, five months doing it, something like that. Online teaching with Refunet. I'm not sure. Melanie, you might have to re... <laughs> I'm not sure what Refunet is. What's Refunet? Or maybe it's a typo. Um, but yeah, my, my TEFL, it took me, I was working at the same time as well, full time. So it took me a while. Um, it was really good. It was brilliant. I have to say, I really enjoyed it. It was really good quality because there are all sorts of TEFLs out here, but the eye to eye one is great. Now, 
you done okay well melanie i did the level five one because i wanted to because um i have plans or i had plans and i thought i'm the sort of person who wants to learn as much as possible so i just automatically did that but if you want to teach online the 120 hour is fine you do no you don't ali you don't um are refined <laughs> okay um yeah so yeah the 120 is all you need for an online school uh, but i'm going to talk about that again a little bit more um uh later so i won't, i don't want to repeat myself we're going to go we're going to start this in a couple of minutes or so just waiting to see if there's anyone else who's going to come in it's quite a few of us here which is lovely um about 50 plus um what else can i tell you yeah i went and did my i did it with the with the um with no degree yes it is sam again the school i'm with wales english so they require degrees but i can um <laughs> yeah melanie i know predictive tech um there are schools that hire with no degree i need to ch i put off the top of my head i don't know what they all are or, or the, the ones they are but i have i have access to documents for that so i can always um let i to i know and give you a link to find information about that um um, I think Lahandre, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read this without glasses. I'm, I hope I've pronounced your name right. If I think level five is specific, well, particularly useful if you're wanting to do um, classroom teaching. So, uh, yeah. Um, and I am a <laughs> mature. Thanks, Melanie. I'm very old. Um, yes, I, I did a degree years ago uh in your 50 well it depends i think adelia i'm just looking at your comment how easy is it to find employment i think for me it was fine i think honestly and again i'll be talking about this more um there will be more information about um uh finding employment and how to do it obviously we're in rather rather weird times at the moment because of covid uh so it is com quite um Quite difficult so right i'm going to kick off here melanie i'm 54 50s are the best um right i'm going to start because we are sort of about two o'clock and i think there's quite a lot of people in here um and everyone else can join right i'm i really i really hope i don't need to put on my um <laughs> my glasses to see what i've done but right i'm going to start let's kick off just gone two o'clock my time right everyone so if i'm going to i won't be able to see everybody's comments because there's a lot of you coming through but i think yeah there are eye to eye people here too who may be able to answer comments but i'm not sure if i'm going to be able to leave comments below afterwards but i'll try and do that um if you have specific questions but i can also tell you how to contact me right let me tell you about myself uh, a little bit of history so yeah i'm tess hello everyone so nice to see you all and um i just i've been asked to do this to give you a little bit of um an insight into my journey i hate that word how i got into online teaching at the ripe old age of 54 um and why i'm doing it so i've been in education for 20 plus years i lived in france for 20 years and i taught um english as a second language there but back in those days it wasn't that important or at least i didn't need a tefl to do what i did and so i taught for a long time i taught for about 15 years um without any qualifications other than having a degree and being english times have changed um and i set up i set up my own company when i was there and i specialized in business english and i worked a lot with um the upper what's the word sort of university high school light level um schools as well so i work there <laughs> i'm trying to say hi to everyone. hi everyone um and so i worked um in france for 20 years had kids and having done a full circle and really enjoyed myself i decided i wanted to come back to the uk at 10 years ago pretty much today and when I came back, I decided I wanted to carry on teaching, but I needed a, um, a teaching certificate to work in schools because I had no teaching qualifications. Sounds terrible, but I didn't. 
Um, so I did a PGCE, which is in the UK, it's a teaching certificate, and I taught in secondary school, so high school, I think it is, um, sort of 11 to 18 year olds for about five, six years. Um, and that was fantastic. I started doing other things and just teaching in the schools that I was in. And I was, um, I was working as um, a teacher part time, but I also started working in something called employer engagement. And this was to bring employers and students together while they were still at school. So I sort of had these two roles going on. Anyway, back in 2017, all of that came to an end and I decided to start consulting for a, a school called the British School of Brussels in Brussels. And I did that for two years and I was commuting from the, from Gloucestershire <laughs> all the way to Brussels every week. And I stayed over there and it was fantastic and exhausting. And so midway through that, I thought, ooh, what am I going to do when I finish this? And I'd been talking to my partner, what are we going to do? You know, we're nearing the end of our careers, I suppose. And um, we decided to, or I decided, no, we decided, we'd talked about it. And we've both said we want to be able to travel when we're older, when our kids have gone. And, you know, we've been talking a lot about living abroad for six months a year, maybe, and then six months back in the UK, or maybe completely going. So about two years ago, probably two years ago, I think it was, I decided to do a TEFL. I thought, I've got to do this because I never did anything proper, proper a while back. And so I did. I did the I2I TEFL, the 260 with um, a specialism with online. And I found it invaluable. It was super useful because have, even though I'd been teaching and been in education for such a long time, I didn't have any experience with young kids. I've never taught young kids. Um, but also... Um, but also I, I um, learned so much about online teaching and just refreshing stuff that I hadn't done because I hadn't actually taught for about four years before joining Wales. So I did that. And Paul, my other half, Paul and I, you know, we it, it, this was all part of our life plan at the ripe old age of 52. I was at the time and I thought we thought, yeah, I'm going to do this. So I did my TEFL. Then um, having having done that, I decided I stopped working in Brussels, came back here and then started looking for work, not in teaching because the TEFL I'd done for later, for when I wanted to teach later. But things happened and I didn't end up getting work as easily as I thought I would. And um, I think there's a lot of ageism out there, which is why this is quite an inf interesting conversation to have. And I decided back in well, the early November to tried to get job a, a job teaching online. So I did a lot of research. I looked around and I came across two schools I decided to apply to. Um, so I've, I applied to a school called, say, ABC, and I applied to a school called Wales English, which you can see here. Now, um, luckily for me, my application was successful. I got into both and I started tentatively teaching at both. Um, and then after after a while, I decided to leave, say, ABC because they didn't really suit me. It wasn't my type of school. And I decided to jump completely in with Wales. Um, so hold on. I'm not sure. I'm, go I'm just going to finish what I'm saying and then I'll try and answer some of these questions as well. Um, so here we go. This is where I can't actually see anything. <laughs> So let me talk about that. So I was really lucky because I joined Wales in November a year ago, literally a year ago yesterday. And this was before COVID. And of course, since then, everything has changed. Now, um, I was really lucky, actually, I think, to have got in when I did. Um, and now I am doing it full time. So let me talk a little bit about how I sort of moved from being an on, a, a, a sort of school teacher, a classroom teacher to being an online teacher. And what sort of things did I need to do to make it work online? So as a classroom teacher, you know, you have a lot of kids with you. You've you know, you've got maybe 30 in the UK it is anyway, 30 ish kids in a class. It's really full on. You're there six hours a day. You've got lots of additional um, uh, obligations as well. But then, you know, and you teach. 
but you still have the same sort of skills. You have skills you use in the classroom that you're going to use online. Um, and so for me, it was it was quite an easy transition. There are things that you need to do that are definitely different when you're online to being in a classroom. So, for instance, if, if I just sort of think the things about teaching online, the key things to be good at is you need to be very good at not saying very much. Sounds a bit odd, doesn't it? But when you're trying to teach somebody online, you need to keep what you call teacher talk time down and you have the student talk time up here. And so it's very easy just to go blah, 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 blah. And so you have to adapt the way you speak when you teach online. It's quite interesting and you really reduce the amount of output you have. You need to use things called TPR. I don't know how many of you, I'm sure lots of you know what TPR, so total physical response. And that's great fun, um, but it's not natural for many people. I've never used it. I did lots of research on YouTube, came across some fantastic videos before my interview to because I had no idea what TPR was, didn't know how to use and had no clue. So YouTube was my friend, learnt lots. Um, something else you have to do, and so I know there's now 125 of you. Hi, everyone. So keep your face smiling. I know I'm not always smiling, but when I teach, I have my faces like this all the time. Because when you have a child who can only see you through a camera, and if your natural resting face is sort of a bit like this, they may think that they've done something wrong. So it's really important that your face is animated, that you look happy and smile. You know, you don't necessarily have to do that when you um, you don't necessarily have to do that in the classroom. You can sort of hide behind a computer or look at a desk. You simply can't do that online. You are always on show. You can't go off camera. You can't do anything. So you really, really have to be aware of your um, of, of your, your physique and how you are. Um, all the time um now if i what else can i tell you I, maybe i can tell you a little bit about um working for a company like wales some of you may have heard of wales english now i'm very very aware as i said earlier there are lots of you from south africa here wales do not hire from south africa there are other companies who do so i will leave the names of those um afterwards but if you're going into online teaching at the moment in this current climate it's quite tricky um because there are a lot of people who want to teach online because there are a lot of people who have lost their jobs um and just to if i if i start talking about the um hold on a minute let me make sure i'm not going to forget anything so if i start talking about how to get into an online company and then I'm going to talk a little bit about what what I do how long it took me to fill my schedule the sort of money I make what because this is my full-time career this and I've set up my own online brand so everything has now changed because of teaching for Wales so if I talk about getting into a company now if you want to teach online my big 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 piece of advice for the majority of these schools the good ones anyway is that you need to have a really good cv this is my first huge tip um and you need to make sure that your cv is written for chinese native speakers and for teaching online because i see i, I do a lot of referring for wales i work um for them a lot in that area and the amount of cvs i see that actually aren't relevant to teaching or have a lot of information that could have been shortened they're too long then they're just not specific enough they're quite hard to read cvs are really important so a great cv is super important um other things you need to think about is whether or not it's something that you can do you know how many hours do you want to put in it um because when you apply different schools have different requirements now wales for instance they require eight hours minimum a week and peak times other schools are far more flexible so when you're looking to join a school it's really important to do a lot of research because you want to find a school that suits you also go into all the <laughs> how do you spell wales with h w h <laughs> thanks julie um you you need to um do the research to find something that suits you because there are so many different schools some are definitely better than others Wales, I'm really lucky. Wales is a good school. Say, say ABC, where I used to work, I've heard is going under. 
Um, so you need to really do your research and think about um, where you are as well, because I'm in the UK. So when I teach, I teach in winter time from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. because I teach four hours a day during the week. If you're in the States, it's much earlier in the morning. Um, you know, so so you really have to think about your time zone, your commitments, all this sort of stuff when you're looking um, for for the right company. Um, what else do I think of? Oh, yeah. I mean, as far as things like um, for, for a company like Wales, their commitment is both a plus and a minus because it gives you stability because they ask you to commit for 30 weeks minimum because when you're teaching, you have the same two kids for 30 weeks and then they tend to renew. So you can teach the same kids for over, over a year, two years, depending on how long they stay. Is that what you want? Maybe, maybe not. It gives stability to me because I know exactly what I'm teaching every week, who I'm teaching, and I get exactly the same, pretty much exactly the same pay every week. So there is a certain stability that in other schools you won't get because you may only have one or two weeks ahead of you planned. Um, right. What else am I going to tell you about? Shall I have a look at um, some questions? Maybe, I don't know how to. I can't. Can I scroll up to some of the questions? <gasps> have I done anything? Let me just have a look. Da -na -na -na. Got to... Na -na -na. Sorry, this is really funny. Trying to read stuff you've already posted with no glasses on. Um, right, OK. Uh, right, I'm not too sure. There are people talking about links, applying with links. If you're interested in applying for Wales, I'm sure um, I can leave contact details for me at the end um, because I do recruit for them. But um, right, I'm going to carry. Oh, how do you send a CV to, of teaching? Yeah, right. OK, so, Julie, that's a really good question, actually, about the CVs. Now, again, different companies are going to have different requirements. Wales and I'm talking for Wales. I'm sorry, I can't talk for others because unlike some teachers, I actually only teach for Wales. I've jumped all in with them. Some teachers work for several schools, um, but for Wales, they um, they require one year's experience of teaching, whether it's online in class or it can be as um, a sort of coach or, a, 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 um, you know, if you're one of in a summer camp or summer school, it doesn't have to be formal online or in class teaching, but it's working with kids and sort of doing a teaching thing. Um, so. You can, um, hold on, I've lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Oh, what was I saying? Somebody write down what I was saying. <laughs> I can't remember what I was saying. Oh, CVs, that's right. That's right. So um, if you haven't got experience as such, then yes, I would. you either apply for a different type of school or you try and get work in classrooms or anything working with kids. I think, yeah, that's an, that is important. And when you find some of the... Um, when you start looking at schools, then find out what they're offering and what their requirements are, because tend to be pretty strict. Wales really are. If you find their requirements, they don't really bend from them. They really, really ask people to have those sort of things. Um, so in their case, it's something like, ah, oh, somebody's family. Thank you. So in their in their case, it's um, you have to have a degree. It's non-negotiable uh, um, in regarding that a TEFL or CELTA or TESOL. 120 hour minimum you have to come from and this is I'm going to give you the list of countries for Wales it's England uh, the UK Ireland the US Canada Australia New Zealand that those are the countries they hire from and only those countries and native English speakers you have to have an a year's worth of experience with kids and you need to be able to commit to this minimum amount of hours. So these are the sort of things you need to think about when you're researching. Now, let me talk about other things. Hold on. I'm going to have to put I'm really sorry. I've got to put on my glasses. Ah, yeah. Pay. Mm, that's quite a good thing. Let me talk now a little bit more about um, how many hours I teach and making this a career, because I think some of you are probably in here thinking, can I do this? Can I switch to making online teaching a, a career? And I'd say yes. Now, when I started a year ago, it took me a while to fill up my, I can take off my glass again. It took me a while to fill up my slots. Um, I personally opened three hours a day when I started and you start 
teaching trials. I think that's fairly common with most schools, just so you get used to using the certain type of the each platform. Um, now we have our own platform, so you need to know how to use it. You have to start practicing all your TPR, you know, sort of saying things, listening, all the stuff that you never do unless you're online. Um, anyway, you do that. You have to. Another thing about being successful when you do your profile um, teaching is to have great profiles, a teacher profile or intro video if your school requires that, um, because for for Wales, they the parents will look at those videos to choose you as a teacher. So when you start, you do your trials, then you have a load of training to do. And then you can open slots to do the regular classes. And that's where you start getting your security um in that you have these weekly lessons and you start building those and that they're, they're the things that give you security as far as income is concerned i'd say um then i decided as they filled up my 15 slots filled i decided to open up at the weekend um so i then started teaching at the weekend and they got filled up too but my weekend classes i kept as flexible which means that i could open and shut them every week and thank heavens i did that because all my slots became full all my everything was full so i'm now i'm now teaching 20 hours a week during the week so monday to friday and there were times i was doing five hours on saturday five hours on sunday and after a month or so that i nearly that was awful it was far too much so now i only do it 20 hours a week and from time to time at the weekend now what do i you know i i also what else if, if I start talking about income, because I'm sure some of you are going to be interested in that. Um, Wales are better, some of the better, one of the better paying schools. They're, 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 they're um, what's the word, they're, they're visit, what they pay, their, their tariffs, I can't remember the word. Anyway, they pay, that's the word, they pay between 18 and $26 an hour. And it works out an hour. Their lessons are either 25 minutes or 50 minutes long. But it turns it's it's about an hour. Everyone starts on trials and they all get $18. But then you can be offered slightly different rates depending on the grade uh, of class you teach and also your interview. You know, how good were you at interview? Because depending on that, that's how you get your offer. Now, um, I'm going to tell you what I made in my first year. So it gives you an idea. When I started, it was really very low because I was hardly working at all from remuneration. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. Um, anyway, my first year, I made, hold on a minute, I wrote this down. Yeah, just over $29,000. Dollars, not pounds, dollars. Now, you know, my first paycheck was $300, I think. Now, this is, this is important. It's important to say that I don't just teach for Wales, um, because, again, in certain companies, I, I'm, I'm so sorry, I can only speak about Wales, so I sound a bit repetitive, but um, in certain companies, you can do more than just teach. So for Wales, for instance, you know, I'm the sort of person who just says, I ask, if you don't ask, you don't get. So I always ask. And I asked, you know, I started doing videos for them because I have my own YouTube channel now. Um, so I'm doing a lot of referring. I'm their top recruiter now. Um, I've done, I'm a mentor for them. So for certain levels of class of teachers, so the English starter class, um, teachers who struggle teaching that particular class, I do mentoring sessions for them. Um, I've done videos for them, etc. You can also do evaluating for them. There's lots of stuff you can do to add to your basic pay. Um, and on top of the, 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 the amounts I gave you, there are bonuses and stuff like that. So that was my first year. And I am anticipating my second year to be around 43,000. So it's quite, yes, you do need a passport. You need, you need, uh, you know, you, it's the identity you need to have April. Actually, that's a good point. I'll talk about that later. So for me, it's worth doing because I don't just teach. Now, if you just teach, and I know lots of people who do because that's all they want to do and it's all they have the time to do because my kids have grown up and gone. Um, you, you know, I think earning between $1,800 and $2,000 a month is is, is doable absolutely um so again it depends where you live you know in certain countries i'll go a lot further than in the uk for instance you know i'm not very well off but i can pay my mortgage and i can live you know and that is really important to know 
Um, does anyone have any other? Let me have a look at a few questions. Hold on, let me scroll up again. I had a crash. Or na, 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 na. Hold on, Kathleen. I had a crash in preschool and so being a call away. Potentially, um, it depends. I'd say it depends on the schools you look at. Um, for as I said, for Wales, they do want teaching or working with kids experience. Um, anyone else who? Let me have a look. I'm an LSA. Yeah, LSA. Yes, yes. Now, as far as your, you know, if you're doing CVs, then you need to, you know, you need to really sell your skills. This is another tip. I'm going to give some top tips. Let me have a look. Um, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to give you some top t tips for, um, for for applying to schools and um, what you need to do to get your CV right. So sell your skills, because if you've been doing something that's slightly different then, you know, I see a lot of CVs because I review everybody's CVs when I refer for them because I know what Wales looks for. And I go through a lot of CVs and a lot of them don't actually say the sort of teaching skills you have. So if you've been doing, if you're an LSA and you've worked around children, then you need to re, you know, you need to draft your CV in such a way that it shows to the company you're applying for that you have the skills that will suit them and match their needs important because some people sort of forget that so yes you can um what else could i answer have i taught business adults i did in france but i never i i don't wales don't have adults at all it's all children now there are other companies other schools out there online schools that do um what was i going to say that do that sort of thing um i think i tutor group i think i tutor group do um, and yes, I can see if anyone needs to get in touch with me. Of course they can. If you go to my YouTube channel, you'll find my email address there as well. Now, what else do I need to talk to you about that is of great interest? Um, OK, one thing. Has anyone got any questions? Any questions particularly? Right. Helen, if you don't have a possible to gain online... Do, Helen, have you worked with other, have you worked with children? I think that's the key thing. It doesn't matter if you haven't been a, a teacher in schools as such, but if you've worked around kids, yes. Primary school, absolutely perfect. Yes, no, 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 no. The majority, Katie, are younger. I mean, my kids, I teach from, this is crazy. I teach three-year-olds and my eldest, who is, fantastic english my eldest student is th th 11 or 12 or something like that um so you know yes katie you can if you're a secondary teacher absolutely no problem whatsoever um not right if you are non-native speakers aurora i think you need to go and have a look online i am not the best person to help with that I know that there are a lot of Facebook groups out there, loads of loads and loads of them. Some are nicer than others. Um, some are helpful. Some are less helpful. But you will find, you know, if you post in them saying, I'm non-native, can anyone help? You tend to find people who do. Now, I, I was going to say there are three schools that I know of who hire South African teachers. And that is Cambly, uh, Magic Ears and Landy, apparently. Now, Cambly is probably... Uh, I'd see Cambly is probably in my list from top to bottom. I'd say Magic Ears, Landy and then Cambly. But they recruit. Um, they recruit. Now, the other thing I was going to say is. Um, is that I again, I when I was talking about how much I've earned, that is with Wales and what they pay. Now, other companies don't pay as much or some of them don't pay as much. You don't really, so, so you can only, um, you can only really work out your, the sort of income you can make when you've decided and looked at the companies that you're thinking of applying to. Um, but if you can do the sort of thing I do, absolutely no problem. Now, what else was I going to talk to you about now? The other thing, actually, I was going to mention this, although I haven't done this online, maybe I will in the future. You can become an independent teacher. You don't have to work for one of these schools. There are schools that have um, 
there are schools that have um oh what's the word who are based in europe or who are for europeans you um and so you're teaching within your time zone a lot of these companies have chinese kids korean kids that sort of thing um yeah and i have i will try yeah links to cambly you can honestly you can actually google them cambly but i will yeah i'll write them in hold on cambly i won't have links but this is how they're sp spelt magic ears and landy these are the three schools hold on let me just put those into the chat box those are those three schools that hire south africans um what was i saying now i've lost what i was going to say <laughs> sorry i shouldn't write and speak it doesn't work ah yes that's right i was talking about um okay well that's interesting nazarene you've told right okay so this is the thing they change they change their requirement yeah i know it's going independent so that is something else to think about that i think it's quite an interesting thing to do if you are the type of person who can put together your own curriculum, if you can market yourself, if you can find a way of reaching students, then you can most definitely, definitely go independent. And being independent will give you the freedom to teach when you want, to teach who you want, to teach uh, a curriculum of your choosing and to set your own prices. Thank you, um, I tried for the Cambly one. So, so you know, there is a real, I, I think there's a real advantage to going um, independent. Those are the pros. I mean, for, in a way, that's what I did when I was in France because I'd been working for language schools in France and then decided to set up my own business because I earned more. I could, you know, it was, it, rather than paying money going to the school, it all came to me. Um, and it was a good idea. But I think, um, I think it's just, it's certainly worth considering, especially um, for, for, for those of you who are from countries who aren't necessarily on the, the list of uh, the countries that these big Chinese companies are hiring from. So think about it. Now, um, you know, where would you advertise? And then, yeah, you see, this is the sort of thing. Um, I know in Facebook groups, if you sort of put in ESL teaching online, online ESL teachers, et cetera, et cetera, you will find a ton of groups that you can go in and there are people who advertise um, help for independent teachers or may give you support if you're setting yourself up. But um, you, I, I am not an independent te online teacher, so I haven't got all the details. I mean, the obvious downsides to it are that you need to do all your own prep. You need to do all the curriculum stuff. You need to market yourself. I don't do that. You know, Wales does it for me. Um, so I don't need to worry about that. Much less time spent. Um, now, let me see. Do, 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 do. What else have we seen in here? No. Hold on. How much? So, so Katie's asking, how much time do you spend planning and marking work? If this is for for Wales, if you're talking about Wales, Katie, it it depends on the level, the grade you're teaching. So I have all the way from sort of learner, beginner um, lessons, which take hardly any time at all, and there's no homework and no almost no prep, to my grade four. So the very, very good levels and we're studying literature and we're doing, uh, you know, things like Charlotte's Web, etc. And they take a lot more time, but I'm paid more for those lessons. So there's a sort of balance. Um, it really depends, but you get quite good at doing it very quickly. Otherwise, you can spend hours if you're a diligent teacher. When you start doing this, like anything, it takes time to build up to um, because it is quite hard to do. But um uh, yeah, I think for some for some people, the independent route is a really good thing to think about and research. But as I said, I haven't got a huge amount of experience, but I really wanted to mention it because you should go off and find out about it. Um, if I talk about things that I love, maybe talk a little bit about what I really enjoy and what I get out of teaching online. Um, I really like the flexibility. So, you know, Paul and I are going to start being able to travel more long term in the next sort of year or so and i see this as my career now i'm not going to stop teaching online because i've built up my youtube channel and my 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 referring and and coaching and all the stuff that i've built around this 
um, it's just going to continue. But what I love is the fact that I can just pack up my computer as long as I have um, uh, an Ethernet cable, some light, any light will do, um, and my laptop and a couple of trusty props. You know, I've got my my rabbit tends to come around with me quite a lot. Um, you can go anywhere, and that is just amazing. I have so far taught in a ho in in a tiny little Airbnb in Paris. I've taught in I've taught in um, in in a, in an office when I was in Belgium working for that school. Um, and I've taught from a hotel room in Cape Verde where I had a chair on the on the coffee table to get my computer at the right hour. And, uh, you know, it's it, it's fantastic because you really can go anywhere. You don't have to be a whippersnapper to do this either. You know, there are Wales have got and again, I'm talking for Wales. Wales have got a lot of teachers over the age of 45. I know they do because somebody recently just said, how many of you are over the age of 40? And so many people said, I am, I am, I am. And, you know, I know that they've got six year old teachers working for them. The important thing when you're doing online teaching is just to have a lots of energy, be super positive, be dynamic. And then that that will help. Um, and I've got a little bit of me that's a bit of a child, I think. <laughs> that's why I like it so much. Um, what else could I say? Other things that I love about doing this in hmm, what else do i love i love the fact that the kids i teach are amazing i love the fact that i have them i've been teaching some of them for about 10 months now so they've done one course and they've renewed so you really get to know them well it's almost you know and they share things with you they come in and chat to you before class starts all about their school and what they're doing and they show your favorite toy you know the kids are wonderful where where i work the curriculum's pretty good it's not perfect but you know wales uses uh national geographic reach um they use the Oxford University Press, so I teach a lot of the Kip and Chip. I'm going to say it wrong. Chip, Kipper, Biff, those books, they're brilliant. Um, and then you've got all the Bob books for the lower levels who are learning phonics. So the curriculum's really good. I really like that. And, you know, it's just it just suits me because it's I have suddenly found, found at the age of 52, 3, when I started doing this, a completely new life. And that's why I think doing TEFL is so brilliant, because it means that you suddenly get, you know, freedom to do new things and go new places. Um, is there anything, what else can I say? When you start off doing this, um, I think the difficult things, because there are difficult things, you, at the moment, as I, it's getting a job. Not simple. It is not easy to get work at the moment simply because of the amount of competition. There are tons of people looking for work. Um, what else is quite challenging? Um, finding a company that suits you, getting the pay that you deserve. Never, ever, you know, don't forget to ask. Really, I always advise that. Um, you know, some of the schools for Wales, for instance, you've got a lot of training. When you start, it seems quite overwhelming because they do, you know, you do your trials training, you have to do regular class training. There's work to be done to then then settle into something that's far easier. Um, it's, you know, if what else could I say? I suppose you've also got to get to know the platform you're using. So whether you're teaching through Zoom or with Classin or whatever platform your particular school uses, you have to get used to that. And then it's just a question of getting to know, you know, how how it is and and and, and learning at the same time. So um, it's it took me, I'd say about a month, month and a half to really settle in into this online teaching thing and not to feel like I was being an idiot and getting it all wrong and not being worried because it's always scary and you think, oh, gosh, does the Internet work and all the rest of it. Um, and that reminds me of the other thing I was going to give you. So a few top tips, a few top tips. If you want to work online, work on your CV because that is really important. Sell your teaching skills. Do some research and find the um, schools that suit you and your needs. Um, check right internet now if you can't if you can't provide stable internet you're going to really struggle doing this um so it's really well worth while um getting you know ensuring that your 
somehow you've got a minimum because this tends to be i think it's a fairly normal um upload download thing whales they are for 20 mbps or something whatever it is upload and download i don't quite have that i have about 18 i think it upload and a lot more download um so there's quite a lot you know the importance of internet is enormous and when i'm coaching people there are lots of people who try and do their lessons and stuff on wi-fi if you have a cable it's a lot less less you know it's a lot more stable so think of the internet other things you need to do don't go off when you're interviewing don't go off and buy lots of props keep it simple be yourself um and just remember that most of these schools when they're interviewing you they just want to see who you are as a teacher you know i are, are you going to be somebody they want to put in front of their clients the kids and the parents because you also have parents sort of just off screen <laughs> who are always watching so you can sometimes be teaching parents as much as the kids it's quite funny um what other top tips can i give you about this oh yeah go on seriously go on to youtube that is if you're new to TEFL teaching, there are so many amazing channels out there with everything you could possibly ever want to know about online teaching. So whether it's getting the best props, office equipment, you know, how to set up. Uh, and when I started, I'm in this lovely new office, which has only been mine for a few weeks. I taught in my bedroom with a tiny desk, you know, on a on an ironing board with a box on top in order to stand up because I found I had a bad back after a while. So, you know, there's you really can start off with very, very little. You don't have to have everything when you start. Um, it's quite important to know that because you don't have to spend a fortune. Now, let me have a look at some questions because I'm very aware that I haven't been answering them. Now, uh, 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 uh. ah, yes, OK, yep. That's good to know. <laughs> They'll be great into that. Right. ADSM. Yes. Um, hold on. Elizabeth. And I have AGSM and Certificate Advanced Studies for Solar Violence and Guildhall. Well, Guildhall's great. My mum and dad went there. Um, but I'm not sure is if it isn't a degree. I don't if it doesn't have BA, it won't it won't count. I'm pretty sure. Um, but I'm not sure, you know, a PGCE on its own. Well, that's a bad example because you need a degree to do a PGCE. But just a teaching certificate, maybe from other countries, it's not enough. You need a degree. Um, Juliet, Juliet says American versus UK English makes no difference. They don't care. There are some schools like VIP Kid, for instance, they only recruit from North America. They don't recruit from the UK. Ah, I know another very different. Now, this is slightly out there um for those looking at ways to teach online you've also got something called out school now i don't know if any one of you have heard of out school but no there isn't zoran for wales there's no requirements as to where you live it's where your passport is and your passport needs to be valid for a year for wales to know you know for them to accept it so yeah you can live anywhere um what else was i going to say Got to stop talking and writing and reading. Oh yeah, out school. <laughs> Sorry. So out school was set up for homeschooling parents in the states a few years ago, and it's just exploded over lockdown um, through this last year. And I know a lot of teachers who are TEFL teachers who also teach without school. Now out school, you don't need a TEFL certificate. Thanks, I to I. Yeah. Um, they are absolutely. It, it's a completely different thing. You don't need to have a degree. Uh, you don't need to be native speakers. You just need to teach. I know that you do have to be from certain countries, so it's worth checking out. But for some of you, that might be an opportunity to write your own lesson, set your own price, and then you actually can teach anything. And you will find I'm not going to go into huge amount of information about art school, but go and have a look at it, because if you have a teaching background or just a passion for something, you could potentially design um you could potentially design a lesson that you teach over and over again for 10 kids and you charge 10 10 dollars or 10 pounds or whatever it is per kid for a half hour lesson so you could make 50 dollars from a one half hour lesson if you have five kids in it it's worth looking at it's worth looking at and then um it's just another opportunity of working online 
Um, I know, I know that one of their most, you know, I've had a look at it because I've been thinking of doing out school and, you know, they have lessons from how to draw a unicorn to, um, you know, teen chat. So they have a, a sort of class which is just for teenage girls with somebody who's done a lot of psychology. So this psychologist set up this this class and it's just to have teenage girls coming in and sharing concerns or chatting about whatever teenage girl, you know, I mean, you've got everything in the kitchen sink at out school. <laughs> um, it's quite interesting. Now, um, Barbara, that's a good one. You've got everything. Your passport is Dutch. Do you by any have chance have a British driving license? Because if you do, that could be a way around it. If you only have a Dutch passport, even if you've been in here in the UK forever, um, then it won't work. But they do. If you can't, if you say you don't have a passport, if you don't have a passport, you can potentially use your um, driving license as an ID. Um, do you have South Africans who are doing this? Um, are you talking about? So I'm not sure if I'm going to say your name correctly. Is it Zandilu? I'm really sorry. Do you have South Africans who are doing what? Working for out school or working for Wales? Working online? Sorry. If you clarify, I will try and answer that. Let's have a look at other ones. Do you still get paid if this? Oh, here we go. Hold on. Uh, 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 Katie has just asked, do you still get paid if the student doesn't attend the scheduled lesson? It depends, Katie. It depends if they have a cancel. If they cancel 24 hours before the lesson. No, you don't. Um, I've got a cancellation for tomorrow morning that I heard of yesterday. But if they don't turn up at the very last minute, you get paid. If they cancel within 24 hours, you get 20 percent of your pay. So it does depend. Now, how do you keep, Rihanna, this is a great question. How do you keep children engaged when teaching online? Ha ha, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, ha, a lot of energy, a good curriculum, good lessons. Um, having, depending on the age, you know, you, I use a mixture of things. I use props for the little ones. I have a lot of props in my classroom. You can't see them all, but there are lots of them. This is my favorite. This one always works. I've got to show you this. This is the best thing about teaching online. When you're 54, you can actually pretend to be a kid again. So this is Toucan who comes out and he tends to sort of appear like this and, you know, gives me a hug and that's great. These sort of things for lower, lower, younger kids are really good but even some of the better ones you know if you just come up with something quite silly from time to time the key thing to having them engaged is probably getting to know them as kids and I find that's really lovely with Wales is because I'm teaching the same kids every single week and most of them I've now taught for nearly a year um you know you really know them and so you can you can pick up on their moods if they've had a bad day at school and you just you know you learn what they like so i have kids that love robots so i have got my little rubber robots you know and they come out and their rewards and there are lots of tricks that you learn but it's a really it's it's a really good question and i've got the sun coming in <laughs> i can't see right what else um now I'm just looking. So would you mind if you're letting us know online? Right. So um, again, I'm not sure I'm going to say you're Gurgen. I'm really sorry if I haven't read, said your name properly. Would you mind if you're letting us know to know online teaching platforms? So Zoom, I know people use Zoom. If you're independent, it's completely up to you. I use Zoom for coaching. Skype, I'm not sure about. And then there are other ones. Um, but <laughs> I think the best thing for questions like that is to go into Facebook groups who are, you know, who have people who work independently because they will know a lot more about that than me. But there are, you know, Zoom is super easy to use um, because you've got an annotation tool so you can write on the screen. Now, South Africa not included in the list. No, it's not, um, Godwin. Apart, I'm afraid it is not for Wales. They don't recruit from South Africa, which is a real shame because it is there are so many great teachers there. How many kids are you teaching at one time? Laura asks. Right. Wales has usually its biggest program is 1v2. That's for Wales. Um, it also has a program of 1v6. So I teach two. I personally just teach two kids at a time always. But there are some they do other um, classes where there are six um, in a class. But then other other um 
other companies vip kid i know is one-on-one -on -one. quite a lot of them are one-on-one -on -one. say abc used to be four or six so again when you're doing research have a look and see what sort of things they say um, but I personally teach two and it's great because we do a lot of peer to peer work. So I'm getting the kids to talk to each other, uh, which, you know, takes the pressure off me, but enables higher student talk time as well. And even the little ones, you can train them to say, hello, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. You know, and then the elder, my my kids who are studying the magic tree house and uh, the one and only Ivan and that sort of thing. They go off and they discuss things and, you know, I have to set timers for them to be quiet. <laughs> Five minutes of talking and then we have to carry on. So it's great having two in a classroom. Right, what else? Let me have a look through. Oh, yeah, Kathleen's asked, what's your YouTube channel? You, yeah, i to i have posted it. Uh, thank you, i to i uh, Anything else? Consol yeah, Nazarene's asked again, consolidated list of reputable teaching platforms. If you're meaning, I, I mean, this is a good question. I'm not sure if you mean platforms, it's actually the software. I don't know. The schools, yes, there's a lot out there, but I will send, I will put a link to a, a document a friend of mine has made, which is a review of all the different types of, um, all the different types of schools and their requirements where they hire from degrees everything so i will make sure that's um, done soon what else do you need do you need partnership with your company godwin asks i'm not sure what you mean godwin can if you're still here can you just write it at the bottom and i'll have another look at that anything else da, 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 da. right i don't know i'd sort of run out of comments there right um OK, so does China accept TEFL? Absolutely. Yes, it needs for 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 that. It's 120 hours minimum online line. Susan asks, do you get paid per child or per class per class? So I get paid between 18 and 25 dollars an hour for the lessons I'm doing. Um, what else? Anything else that people are asking about? Uh, not okay South Africa yeah I love South Africa I love South Africa um oh yeah good question Sharon now we're paid in dollars which is a bit of a shame being in the UK knowing that the dollar against the pound is not brilliant at the moment but we are now you can either get paid wire transfer into your bank account or they pay into a company called Payoneer Personally, I've set up, and this is quite, actually this is maybe useful for some people, I've set up a transfer-wise borderless account in dollars. So I get paid into that so I don't have a conversion fee that my bank would charge. Then I convert it in um, transfer-wise and then I put it into my British account. And uh, it's quite interesting. Every month people are saying, what's the best way of getting the most out of our dollars because if you're in the in, in the US, it's great. But if you're not in the US, then, you know, you have the exchange weight rates. Um, right. What else? Um, da, 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 right. Now, so I'm going to write that down. So I'm going to put in something right document with all the information about schools. OK, sorry, I'm writing that down. I will put in that link. Right. OK, so advice for CV without teaching online. Orla. Um if you've got work with um if you've got work with children then you just need to write something that shows your skills the type of skills you'd need in an online classroom so i always tell my refer referrals that they need to show the technique you know what techniques what skills do you use in a classroom or with kids when you're with them so you know it can be peer-to-peer -peer, it could be scaffolding modeling um, do you use, uh, you know, TPR in a classroom, props, all these sort of things. So really don't be afraid to say what you can do and be creative <laughs> in how you express yourself. You know, keep the English simple, really important because you've got Chinese for, for my company. They're Chinese, the hiring team. So I see I've had Ph.D. applications come in and, and the people have written a six page CV with one page just of um, all their research papers and published papers, not much of which is of interest to Wales, but most of all their English is very, very complicated and the Chinese team will find that difficult. So any CV, whether you've got experience or not, keep it, keep it 
concise to the point, easy to read, really clear layout, and just sell the skills, anything you have done that is relevant in a classroom. That I think is the key point. So whether you've been, you know, you could have been working, I don't know, working in a, a play group, great. You might not have been teaching, but you've been around children, so you know how to calm them down. You need to know how to entertain them. You know how to help them read or learn or whatever it is. Ah, oh, Kathleen, <laughs> sorry. TPR, total physical response. So if I started speaking another language now, je parle français, donc je vais rester comme ça, je vais parler en français. Et je vais dire bonjour, je m'appelle Tess. Blah, 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 blah. Right, so that's me speaking a different language. Now, if I'm sitting here without moving at all and you have no idea what I've th said, you, I, I could be talking anything. Now, if you start using t TPR, you know, say, bonjour, je m'appelle Tess. Dis bonjour, Tess. Bonjour. So TPR is how to help instructions and learn vocabulary. So, you know, if props can be TPR. Owl, owl. Or you can, um, you know, a classic one is, a, you know, a plane. Celebrate. All these sort of words. You, you use your body and you get the other, um, the ch child, the student to repeat, to replicate what you're doing. Um, and it's a really great way of learning it really is if you use tpr well you know then you can cut down the amount you speak this is this is one of mine i use this all the time that means sentence full sentence obviously listen this is when i'm talking they need to learn <laughs> you know so tpr is that um right yes quentin i'm going to try I right i'm back again <laughs> oh god okay Right, I'm here. I'm so sorry. Where is everyone? Can't believe I did that. Right, sorry. I hope people are coming back in. I must have clicked on end live video by accident. <laughs> Very bad. So I can't see all the old comments and I know not everyone will be in here. Um, but yeah, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know who's in. Right, people are back. Okay, so for those coming in now, I apologise profusely. I think I touched my mouse and clicked end rapidly. So please, please, can you put down more questions? I'm very, very happy to answer the questions you were asking. Um, I would really like to do that. Happy to answer questions. What else would you like me to help you with please feel free because I can't see the old questions now which is a real, real shame I'm so sorry so so sorry now what else have I said is there anything else um I'm just wondering what else I was talking about when I managed to to to, to say stop um I think I think because, you know, this was very definitely, you know, this was for um, people who are not straight out of school. Um, I think what I'd like to say before. Ah, there you go. Zorin. Um, depends, Zorin. It depends on the school you are applying to. Degree, it's uh, a degree for Wales is absolutely essential. Um, a lot of them are because um, it seems to be a requirement of most of the Chinese schools, but not all of them. Um, and again, in that document, I will provide a link for later. Um, they will they will be listed, the ones that don't need it. But yeah, because I was saying this is very much for those who are slightly older, not straight out of uni. Um, it's a really, really nice way of working when you're a bit older because... Um, because you don't, you know, you, you could be fairly, it's a really flexible way of working. And, it, it, you know, it's not, we don't have to be young to want to travel. You know, I'm very, very lucky. My kids are, um, um, my kids are sort of in Paris where one of them lives, the other's at university. So I will soon be free to be able to travel. And that's what I want to do. And it is absolutely great to have this sort of career 
that I now have. Um, now, let me start answering questions. I've got sun in my eyes, but I'm not going to press close. Right. Second one. Are there any schools where we can volunteer or teach TEFL to gain some experience? That's a really good question. I don't know. I'm sure there aren't in that the sort of schools I work for or have worked for, they are all requiring teachers who are already qualified and who have a TEFL. But that is a really, I, I, I'm not sure of the answer to that, to be very honest. It may be worth approaching some of the schools um, or, you know, local schools. And I know, again, it's quite difficult. Sorry, you can't see me. Let me try and uh, shut my mind so you can actually see something. Um, sorry. Um, it might be worth trying to find local schools near you or clubs or things like that where you could work with kids but again at the moment with covid it's actually quite hard to do um right rihanna yes i think i said earlier there was cambly who hire south africans i thought magic ears did but somebody's saying at the moment they're not and landy apparently do in the other group there was a link um to those certainly to cambly um right how do kkd how do you teach reluctant or shy students that's a really good um that's a really good question. So um, I think it's a mixture of your personality. So being very warm, making your classroom a very safe place where we laugh and we encourage each other. And I get the students to work together a lot. And that helps when you start teaching. So, for instance, I've got a class at the moment where I have... Um, Hold on a minute. I'm trying to find that um, reluctant or shy. So um, hmm, I would say that for the shy students, you just need to give them the time to decide that they're ready to speak because you've got so many, you know, you've got different types of learners. And, you know, I have some of the kids really like writing on the screen so we can do that well. So I will give them the pen. As we say, they can either type, some of them type, but a lot of them will draw. And so, you know, if they're shy to speak, you can ask them to circle things or, you know, to to without getting them to read immediately. You could just say, oh, can you see? I don't know. Can you see the girl with the doll? And they can circle the girl with the doll and you can praise them and they can feel confident like that. Um, when they're reluctant, it's more a question of finding you know, what is it that they engage with? What do they find funny? A key thing is getting them to laugh. If you can get a child to laugh or that they just enjoy themselves, they tend to forget the reluctant thing. And the other thing I often do is to get into my classroom a bit early because we've got, I'll have two or three minutes to talk to them to find out how they are, to find out if anything important's happened, you know, if there's birthday celebrations or you know, one of them was really proud because they just got accepted into a maths club that was really hard. So we talked about maths. I'm rubbish at maths. She loved teaching me maths, you know. So it's I would say it's a lot is to to get around those sort of things is you have to get to know the student. And again, this is why having students on a weekly basis is great because it gives you the time to do that. Uh, it's different in some companies because you don't always know if you're going to see the child again. So building rapport is something that's quite important. And I did do a video on that, actually, on how to build rapport. There's one on my channel. Um, right, I'm putting on my glasses again to read the questions. I hope that was helpful. Now, um, KKK, right. Zaren, how realistic is it for me to expect to make 2000 a month in my first year with just a TEFL certificate? Um, I think you may be... <laughs> I think you may be pushing it because um, you're going to have to have a you have to find a, a company that will hire you with no degree and that will pay well. And I'm not sure which ones I can um, sort of point you in because I don't know the ones that do hire and I don't know what they're actually paying. Some some I've seen some some um, of the remuneration, some that is offered is is. Personally, I find it insulting that anyone would offer to pay somebody so little. So I think it really depends on the school you end up working with. You know, as I said earlier, I've met, uh, my first year's pay has been 29 and a bit, but I'm also doing other things. So there have been week, there have been months when I've earned four thousand dollars 
half of that's recruiting you know so yes you can re use to earn two thousand a month but you also have to remember that you've got a time to build up um you need to ensure that you've got stability in the school that you're in and you need to know that they will give you the sort of money that you need to earn that um so yeah i, I i'm uh, i'm not so sure about that one zoran um, right. What are the best companies? Teresa. Hi, Teresa. To work for. I love working for VIP Kid. Da, da, da. S teaching students in Central America or another area. Are you talking about in your time zone, roughly, Teresa? Because, I mean, if you're if you're in the States, which you may or may not be, um, then it could be that you don't want to teach in the middle of the night, which I completely understand. Mm. I'm sure there are schools that are, have got um, kids in those areas. Again, if you're American, which I'm assuming you are, or Canadian, you're North American anyway, you could do out school stuff if that's of interest because they hire from there. Um, but yes, I don't know enough to give you a brilliant answer for that, <laughs> Teresa. Wales, we've got quite a few VIP kid teachers who are also working with Wales. But again, you've got the same time zone issues. Right, mischief. <laughs> Hi, Tess um no right as far as whether or not the i2i5 diploma and celta is i wouldn't say personally i don't think they're equivalent i think the celta is the absolute gold standard but only if you want to teach in countries in schools i think the i2i the level five which i have is is great it's apt it's definitely much more in depth than the uh, level three but CELTA is I think from what I've understood is on a on a whole different level and it tends to be the gold standard um, it really depends what you want to do I think that's the most important thing if, if you want to try to get work in schools and in good schools I think most of these schools require a CELTA but it, again, it depends what you want. Are you still there? I am Kathleen. Teresa was a loser to fight and get the job. Yeah, that's not for me. Um, to teach adults online. Now, hold on. I'm reading Alistair's comments here. Was having in an area where I have some experience. You focus on kids, but what are the options for older peeps? Are there any? Yeah, there are. I know that there are online schools, as I, I think it's iTutor Group, who have adults. If you want to do adults, Alistair, personally, I think that could be an area to develop for an, as an independent teacher. Certainly, you know, if you know a few people, you can market yourself. You set something up, get a website, go out, go out and do some research. But to be honest, I think teaching adults is great. You know, I, I, I taught adults for years. I've only been teaching young kids since I started at Wales. But, um, you know, that that works quite well. And because everyone's working from home as well, everyone's used to using Zoom. You know, it, it's a really easy thing to do online. Um, so, yeah, maybe that's a thing to think about, Alistair. Maybe go look at the independent route for that. Um, Kathleen, I don't know if you can hear me because <laughs> she keeps on saying, is this live? Yes, Kathleen, I'm here. Uh, right. Eye to eye. Ba, ba, ba. OK, OK. Yeah, exactly, Teresa. Up at three o'clock in the morning. I take my hat off to you. I don't know how you do it. Um, right. Approximately how long does it take to get a job in Asia after complete? Right. Delia, if that's if that's um, related to actually physically working out there, I don't know. I have no experience teaching in a bricks and mortar school abroad. That's not my domain. Um, hi, Teresa. Blah, 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 blah. So, Wandili, I think you're probably going to be asking, I don't know, Teresa is me or Teresa is the other person who's posting, but I would imagine that that's an eye to eye question um, if you don't have any teaching qualifications at all. Um, right, let's have a look. Thank you. I was teaching in Hong Kong, but COVID sent me home to SA. Right, OK. Yeah. Well, online, yeah, online's great because you really do have the freedom just to to you know to work as you as you want and i love working at home i really enjoy it. i miss 
do I miss people? Not massively. Sometimes I miss the classroom. Sometimes I miss people. But I think at the moment we're in such a strange situation that half the time we don't see people anyway. <laughs> so, you know, and I'm really lucky because the community I have and all the work I do means that I'm always in contact with people. And I do a lot of coaching, so I see a lot of people anyway. Right. Are there any other questions? Um all right no not at the moment has anyone got any other questions i know there's still some of you on the here um i'd be more than happy to answer them um if i haven't if there's anything i've forgotten to say i don't know i haven't gone into huge depth about how to teach online i don't know if it's relevant to you all because i don't know how many of you do teach online <laughs> um is there anything else you want to know or is that it do we call it a day? I am here. I'm just wondering if there's anything else I could share with you. It's a shame I can't share my screen because I could show you some of the Facebook groups that I'm in. But um, I think for a lot of you to get information about, you know, the biggest takeaway for me is that from me is to go and do your research before you decide where and who and what you want to work for. It is really important um now justin you've just asked about passports well for wales again i'm talking for wales um it's it's essential to have id from the country that you are from because as i said earlier they only recruit from six countries so if you don't have id you won't get through they do background checks as well so you know they will want to have some form of um some form of id Wales definitely prepare, prefers a passport and it has to be valid a year. But if you don't have that, and I have had, you know, I've had I've had um, referrals who haven't had a passport. And so they've used their photo, um, their driving license that worked, but it's not their preferred one. So that's what I'd say for that. Anything. I'm really pleased it's been helpful. And if you want to, if you want to. Um, oh, really? Teresa, that's not good. Yeah, no, that, that's not nice. I, I have had quite a lot of referrals who are in their 50s. I've worked with quite a few and they're all in um, Wales hires. They do. Um, if you want, feel free to have a look at my YouTube channel. There's a lot of information in there for Wales English, about Wales English, its application process and stuff. But there's also stuff in there about teaching online. Um I think that's quite important to say. It might be useful if you want to get hold of me. Shall I put my email address in here? Let me write that down and try not to end it this time. Teachstone at gmail.com. There you go. That's me. So you're welcome to reach out to me. Um, anything else? So, uh, right, Delia. I missed out on some of your talks. Sorry. Can I start teaching online immediately after? Right. OK, so um, Delia, for you, there will be schools where you may be able to get experience without too much experience for Wales English. Where I am, you need to have one year experience working with kids, not necessarily actually formally teaching, but certainly working with them. Um, hold on a minute. I'm trying to. OK. Uh, one to one. For old, hold on a minute. Joe Peel, this has been really useful. Thank you. I think it would be helpful also. Oh, right. I too, I had a separate session for older adults teaching adults. Yep, yeah, that's a really good idea. Which would be better, level three or five? It depends. If you're just want to, if you just want to work online, you can do a level three. I always suggest doing a level five for those who've got no teaching experience at all, because you'll learn a lot more. And whether you're teaching tiny kids or older kids it's still teaching skills that you'll learn and they're really useful to have um right okay Teresa may hear from you soon from Wyoming um yeah so Rachel about the degree it as I said it depends on the school so um it, de it depends on the school is all I can say M many of them want a degree but not all of them not all of them Right. How do you gain experience? Claire asks to teach online. So, Claire, if you have already got some teaching experience or working with kids experience, then 
as I was saying earlier, you can you can sort of put that into your CV and word it as such that it shows that you've got experience working with kids. And then it's just a question of learning. And, you know, I had never taught online when I got my job at Wales. I mean, I was quite lucky, but I'm, I'm still helping people. And now, even though it's really competitive, who've never taught online, but they do have teaching experience. And for instance, I know for a fact that Wales, if you've been a bricks and mortar teacher in the past and now just doing TEFL, um, Wales likes to see your bricks and mortar experience. That counts for a lot because they know that you can teach. Um, what else? I've just passed the first course. Which level course do I need to complete to be at right? OK, Leanne, I think that's probably an eye to eye question. Um, I skipped answer of my question. Amina, what was your question? I can't see it. What was your question, Amina? And I'll try and answer it. <laughs> And then I might say goodbye, show you my props. <laughs> Sorry, I do love Toucan. Aha, I have another question. Here we are. So what schools recruit South Africans for online teaching and is it preferred? Right. OK, Tanrin, um, if I Tanrin Nicole, maybe. Sorry. Um, there is a link further up. Um, I've said that there are three, Cambly definitely, Landy and maybe Magic Ears um, apparently are recruiting South Africans. Um, but I was saying earlier as well that, you know, becoming an independent teacher could be helpful, could be a way forward for South Africans who've got teaching experience or who who want to sort of get past the... Uh, the difficulty that there is out there for some for South Africans in some companies. Um, working in Asia with the payment. All oh, right. OK, so Amina, I've never worked in Asia. I just work online. So I'm back here. <laughs> I'm in the UK. So I'm not sure um, actually physically school working in school. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, no, Nazarene, don't worry. It's written down on my, my book. <laughs> Kathleen. Yes, please. Yes, please. What? <laughs> I can't remember what I've said. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem, Nazarene. I promise. Look, look, look. I've actually got it in my notebook. The only thing I've written down in my awful English is Nazarene document about schools. There you go. Proof. I've written it down. I won't forget. Um, anything else? Otherwise, I think I might call it a day if I've answered everyone's questions. Anyone else? 18 minutes past three here. So I'm going to wait here till 20 past and then call it a day. Um, oh, good. A link from I to I. Thanks, Victoria. Any other questions? Any other questions? <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, I'm positive. Definitely. Goes a long way. I <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, I, I haven't forgotten you, Nazarene. <laughs> right, you are welcome, everyone. If you have any questions, I've put in my email. You can go to my YouTube channel. If you are interested in applying to Wales, I will, of course, um, help you. That's simple to do. I have quite a few people through I've had six I think I've had fifth six 17 people recruited this month in November alone so I've worked quite a lot with them yeah I know I'd love to it's so nice I hope to travel soon I'm not sure where Costa Rica is a place I'd like to go both Paul and I absolutely love South Africa oh my good grief I adore South Africa um maybe South America back to Europe oh I don't know Right. OK. How can I practice for making lesson plans? Amina, um, another test, I'd say eye to eye question, but online there's a stack of stuff. And honestly, YouTube is your friend. You can learn about everything. YouTube's new for me. I never even used YouTube to find things, let alone have my own channel a year ago. It was it's brand new. So go and have a look. I promise you can get everything on there. OK, guys, it's 20 past. I think I'm now going to press end live but this time i'm doing it on purpose <laughs> so thanks very much everyone and um i hope it was helpful and i'll see you around online i hope or in the facebook groups take care thanks bye